Right, let's keep going, making his Late Late Show debut tonight. How on earth has it taken this long? I'll never know. He changed the face of popular music forever. Always ahead of the curve. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Boy George. Nice to see you. You're so welcome. Sit down. <laughs> oh, how are you? I'm good. It's nice to be here. It's lovely to have you on the program, man. Yeah. It's your first time I in the I believe I've never been on this show. It took a while, but we got there. Yes, I think I've been asked, but just never, just never worked out. We so. got, we got here eventually, and we're exactly. so happy to see you. You're, I can say welcome home. I think in Ireland yeah, to you. I think that's very fair. You're extremely. I Irish. feel like, uh, you know, I come from an Irish family. Mum's from Dublin. Yeah. My dad's family are from Tipperary or Turles, yeah. something like that. I've got yeah. family all over Ireland. And obviously a lot of my Irish family, you know, moved to the UK. Yeah. So Birmingham and London, you know, Auntie Kit, this one, that one. I grew up with, you know, a lot of Irishness in my life. It's yeah. a funny thing, is it? Because I always feel like if you're Jewish and your mum's Jewish, then you're Jewish. And I feel like my mother's Irish. I'm very Irish. I have a name. I have the name O'Dowd. So when you're a kid... You know yeah, all about it. Yeah, oh loud, I got called, oh loud. Did you get a, a few, a bit of mocking for that along the way? Well, as you can imagine, as a kid, I got a lot of, <laughs> you know, a lot of uh, comments, you know, and um, I, I think that's probably why I was born to be in, you know, in the business that I'm in, you know, because, you know, when I was a kid, I was kind of made to feel like an outsider. And because of the Irishness? No, no, Initially. just because of everything. Oh, because I mean, of the you know, Irishness, you. gayness, you know, yeah. you know, all that stuff, you know, so... I felt like, you know, I had to, be, I had to become a sh more of a show-off, really. Yeah, I'm curious about that, because <laughs> I understand, I, in, 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 just on the Irish thing for a moment, I mean, was it, was it growing up with your folks and, and the extended family, was it Irish music? I mean, would that have been... Featuring? A little bit, you know, Christmas Day, my auntie Kit used to put on rebel songs, which I think in the 70s were allegedly not allowed to be played in the UK, but Christmas Day we used to put on the rebel songs and listen to those songs, and I grew up with those songs, and of course... My uncle was Thomas Bryan, who, you know, I, when I was a kid, I thought we related to Kevin Barry, so there was yeah. a bit of confusion, but as I got older, I realised that that wasn't the case, but... Well, when fascinating, I did, yeah, because if yeah, you're... Who do you think you are? You are? found out about my uncle and found out about my grandmother as well, you know, her life, so that's amazing. Yeah, so you're kind of um, invested in the Irish story, War of Independence, uh, and, yeah. you know, freedom of the country as a republic and so on. Yeah. When you talk about... Uh, the music, uh, whatever about the Rebel songs, mm. talk to me about David Bowie, because I get the sense that Bowie changed everything for you. That he was like a, a light descending from the sky, almost. I feel like Bowie was a sort of natural extension of sort of Rebel songs, really, in Do a way. Because, yeah, because he was, uh, you know, I lived in sort of grey suburbia. Yeah. I was 11 when I saw Ziggy Stardust, you know, and uh, I don't know how I managed to get my father to buy me a ticket to see David Bowie when I was 11. Well, I just... You know, because obviously, you know, a lot of parents were like, you mustn't encourage them to, to watch things like this. And <laughs> yeah, there is this idea that, you know, if you watch something or you read something, it's going to, you know, it's going to have an effect on You'll you. Catch it. it was too late for me, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was too late for me in a way. So seeing David Bowie at 11 and a half, I was 11 and a half, was just a life-changing moment for me. And uh, What happened? What happened when you, when you watched them? Well, you know, there was nobody like him at the time. You know, pop music was very... <laughs> We always need food. <laughs> Positive or otherwise. There was, you know, pop music was very pop, and Bowie came along and sort of presented a whole different landscape. You know, it was androgynous, yeah. it was mystical, you know. Yeah. And, you know, through sort of Bowie, I learned about Bob Dylan, because Bowie sang about Bob Dylan. So there was this kind of musical map of people that I discovered through... I heard about Cahill Gibran through Bowie because he mentions the poet Cahill Gibran in his songs. Yes. It was so much, um, you know, Bowie was very informative, I think, for a teenager. There was did, so much stuff he told us about. Did he, did he, do you feel he gave you permission to be more who you were? I mean, would that be too high for Luke? No, I think it's absolutely what happened. When I first saw Bowie, I was like, well, my brother was the Bowie fan. I used to hear the Bowie records through my yeah. brother's bedroom drawn. I was like, what is this mystical world okay. that I'm not part of? <laughs> and of course, when Bowie came along with Ziggy Stardust, mm. My brother sort of moved on to Rod Stewart in the Faces, who I also loved. And uh, I got given sort of Ziggy Stardust, if you like. It became right. my sort of domain. And, uh, you know, I met Bowie a few times, which was amazing. And in fact, it was great because it was one of the few times when I met someone famous where I was actually present. Do you okay. know where I was like, oh, I'm meeting David Bowie, I'm in the moment. You know, whereas when I met Frank Sinatra, <laughs> okay. I was a little bit like, you know, dizzy. And I 
always kick myself for not being more present at that moment, yeah. you know. But you were there for Bowie, which is super Totally, which is yeah, I was like, oh, amazing. I remember watching Top of the Pops. This is why I'm so happy to meet you, because I remember watching Top of the Pops, and I think Shaken Stevens or someone was due on or whatever, and the next thing, Culture Club show up. And, and I was young and, and, you know, Irish and cosseted, I suppose, is all the same things you described earlier on, but I thought, yeah. where are we going here? I just thought it was just it was color, it was adventure, it was difference. I mean, was that was that was that a game change the the top of the pops appearance? Do you think, or was that a catalyst? Or I remember getting the phone call to say we were going to be on top of the pops, and I just thought that's it, I've made it. I mean, just one appearance was enough because I grew up watching top of the pops religiously as yeah. a kid. Yeah, yeah. If you upset my father, top of the pops was turned off. Okay. So Thursday was like you got best, best behavior. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lifeline to everything that I wanted to be and do, you know. I was just so fascinated by the sort of bohemian rock and roll world, yeah. you know. I imagined that it was very different to what it is, you know. Um, but, you know, I would say music has given me everything. You did know, you, did you want, um, if you may ask it, what did you see when you saw the artist on top of the world? Did you want to be famous? Did you want to make lots of money? Did you want to make music? What, what was the, the... I think the sort of ambitions when I started were different because, you know, now you have shows like The Voice and, yeah. you know, The Big Deal and things like that, so kids know what's possible. When I was a kid, I never really knew, you know, what was possible. You know, when I went to my sort of job <laughs> interview at school and I said, I want to be a makeup artist or yeah. <laughs> in rock and roll, they laughed. How's that go down? Yeah. Maybe you should lower your standards, you know, yeah. but I always knew that I was destined to either be in music or, or possibly fashion, yeah. if, I, if I, you know, if that was the second choice. I think you did something really gorgeous for a generation in the way Bowie did for another generation, uh, which was to go back to that thing about giving permission to people mm. who wanted to look like you, who wanted to dress like you, but who felt very oppressed by societal norms, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but I think you were kind of ahead of the curve. Do you accept that as a, as a compliment? Well, uh, I think I was just being myself, and I suppose in a funny sort of way, being yourself is the most political act you can, yeah. you can commit. For you sure. know, because. You know, we live in a culture now where, you, you know, I love the fact that this young generation is refusing to be told what to be, you know. But I do worry about us giving ourselves too many labels, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all spiritual entities. We okay. are not our gender, or our sexuality or our race. We're more than that, if you want to look at it from a spiritual perspective. So that's kind of where I am now, really, with it. You okay. Know? You, when you, you, you got the, what you wanted in some ways. You got the fame. You got everything. It... How did you manage it? How did you cope with it all? Disastrously. Did you not read the papers? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, you know, I'm in a, such an amazing place right now. Yes, you know, good. And, and I, I don't really think about my past too Do you much. Not? You know, I try to stay very much in the present. You know, anything that takes me away from this moment, the future or the past, isn't particularly interesting to me. I'm very about alert awareness. Okay. You know, so I try to be in this moment because... This is what's happening right now. Yeah, I, I you and me that. talking, that's it. It's the that, big bang of the moment. So you're 13 years sober. Yes. Um, and I read somewhere that you, you, it was a beautiful quote. I think you said, um, it's like somebody cleaned the windows. I think it is. And I, light or whatever I think might. it is a bit like that. And also, I think sort of, you know, the spiritual kind of world is a bit like that as well, you know, where, yeah. you know, you get to see more and hear more and get to enjoy what you do more. I think that I enjoy what I do more than now than I ever did at the height of my fame. Because... Because I'm just a happier person. Are you Buddhist? I practice Nichiren Buddhism, which is the Namya Harenge Kyo. Well, it's the one that Tina Turner does. I always laugh because people always say it's the one that <laughs> Tina Turner does. <laughs> and that brings something else to your life, Buddhism, I take it. Well, I think that it's, uh, you know, chanting and meditating, it kind of brings a sort of stillness to your life, you know, sure. and helps you, I think it helps you to focus on what's important. And were you raised a Catholic? In the that Irish Loosely. Way. Loose. Not practice. <laughs> I mean, you know, my parents, my mum still goes to church. We have a family priest, you know. Okay, okay. And so, you know, it, it's always been part of my life. And I'm not adverse to it. Yeah. It's just, it, you know, I look at it for the beauty of it, not the sort of negativity. I look at it for the positive things that it brings, not, not sort of, you know. So you take, you're talking about the Catholic, the Catholic experience. You take well, something. any religion. Yeah. You know, a lot of religions are quite oppressive, you know, particularly to gay people. You yes. know, they say that we're, you know, we, we shouldn't be what we are. I just ignore that, really, because that's just, you know. But you see goodness within these things and take the good bits or the kind bits. You or... know, there's the amazing people. You know, I've, as I say, over the years, I've met amazing people. You know, our family priest is an amazing man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So that's uh, you welcome ideas and people on a case by case basis. I think at the end of the day, don't you just kind of welcome people? You yeah, don't think about whether somebody is what their religious views are. So when they start talking, and you think, oh my god, they think that, you know, and you know, it's all narrative. What yes. people think about you, what you think about yourself. Yes. And to a certain extent, you know, the past, as beautiful as it is, it doesn't exist anymore, and sort of wallowing in it isn't really particularly helpful to me. Look forward and get on with it. Yeah, or well, just be here now. Be here. Yeah. How's your mummy? My mum's amazing. Is she? Uh, yeah, my mum's hilarious. Um, Why do you, what do you mean? We just, you know, she's, she's 82 now, so she says what she thinks. <laughs> no <laughs> filter. My friend made her a cup of coffee on the weekend. She goes, what's that? Because it was quite milky. And then she turned out she loved it. It was very funny. She goes, oh, it's great. But my mum, I said, say to my friend, my mum's just, don't worry, she loves you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her way of dealing with yeah. it. So we're going to see you back on the television tomorrow night in Ireland. Um, I've done this program called The Big Deal, and it is... You know, I've done The Voice for four years. This is a different type of show because it's uh, a music show with a sort of game show jeopardy where people yeah. get tempted to leave with cash <laughs> payments and people get very upset because I was shouting, take the money, you know, that's a lot. A, that's a little look that's, at you know, the point of the show, yeah. that, you know, and people feel like, oh, I'm not backing myself if I take the money, but then when they don't get the money and they don't go through, <laughs> Rand goes <laughs> wafting away. But it's a really interesting show in terms of the way it plays of people's psychology, you know, and um, it's a variety show, so you get to see, mm. you know, Irish bands, jugglers, you know, skaters, it's, it's really fun. All common. Let's have a little look at a clip of this. The big deal. Well, I think the only thing I would say is just really work on your confidence and ownership. Victoria, you don't need to apologise and say, well, if I don't get through. What you just did was so beautiful. I think that you need to believe completely in what you do, and then it's just going to get better and better. I just think you transported us all to Italy. I felt like there was like a big cathedral. <laughs> oh, you guys absolutely nailed it. It was beautiful. That's nice. I like that. I like what you did there because sometimes those shows can be a little cruel, George, and, and you're, you're saying to her, no, you've got this talent, like, lean into it. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you can always say something helpful to people, you know, and, you know, it was great being with Jedward. They were such a How scream. did you get on with Jedward? They're the gift that keeps on giving. Aren't I mean, they just kept coming <laughs> out with crackers. Man. I was like, what did you just say? At one point they called me Yoda, which I thought was genius. <laughs> Um, I liked them. I knew I was going to like them. I had a feeling before I met them that I'd yeah. like them. You know, they're good they're souls. Librans, they? They're Librans. I get on with Librans. Oh, is that what it is? You're a Gemini, aren't you? Yeah. With an Aries moon. Well, this I did not know. I know, creepy. That's, that's pretty impressive. Is that just from <laughs> our... Googling. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I thought you had this otherworldly gift, Yeah, I know, it's so deep. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what can we expect from you next? Because we'll see the show tomorrow. You seem to be always on the go. What, what are you up to? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot of music this year because this is the first time I've had a year off. So I've really been getting back into my craft of songwriting. I've written about okay. 97 songs this year. 97? Yeah. And I thought, I looked at the last Kanye album, there's like 30 songs on there, I thought, I'm going to put 60 on my next album. <laughs> um, you know, because, you know, it, it, the fact, it only really matters to whom it matters. You know, the thing is, people say, well, why are you doing 60 songs? Well, why not? Why not? You know, I feel like I want to break some of the rules of the music business because it is the most weirdly oppressive is it? industry. You're always being told you can't do this and you can't do that. And as a creative person, I don't want to be controlled. Yeah. So I'm just putting stuff out like, as and when I feel like it. I'm not announcing it. I'm not saying it's an album or a single. I'm just kind of going against the grain a bit. And it's, it's actually quite rewarding. And, and liberating, I suspect. It is yeah. liberating, It's yeah. great to meet you. And great I'm glad to, to see you. you're in a good place. You seem really happy. You've got a lovely bunch of people around you behind the scenes too, right. if I may say so. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And uh, you're always welcome on the show. You know Thank that. Thank you so much. Boy George, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, George. Thank you. All right. The Big Deal starts tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on Virgin Media One. So there we are, though. Dolores O'Riordan's mother will be joining us for a spectacular trip, and I really mean that, to the Cranberries front woman. Uh, from Carlos Iveen to Capitol Hill, CNN's Donia Sullivan is going to be with us. We'll have more great music from the script, yeah, news about this year's toy show, and the son of Sophie Toscan de Plantier joins us on his quest for truth and justice. So there we are. We'll see you after this break.